kind of another high profile prospect. Uh, got off to a, a tremendous start with the Royals, mostly out of the bullpen. But he's got control issues, and they're going to continue to play him. He could be a high K guy, but he's right around four walks per nine. So use caution because that ne- hasn't necessarily gotten any better. Uh, and he's got some some time under his belt now uh, over the last two, three years. Uh, his fastball isn't a tremendously overpowering pitch. You know, he averages around 92 miles per hour on it. Um, my biggest problem with Finnegan is that they're – are too many other options to compete with in Cincy for him to remain in the rotation. I mean, he's going to have to prove himself to remain in that rotation. I understand right now he's slotted in as the Reds' number two starter. I understand, you know, he had 172 innings under his belt last year. Uh, But how much is that really saying for a team that won just 68 games in 2016? Uh, It's not the best rotation. So being number two in that rotation is not necessarily, you know, singing high praises. So, like I said, I, I, you know, <laughs> once promising, I think he's really got to prove something to remain a real life option, much less a fantasy one. Um, you know, that's just my personal thing on it. He, he, it's not really a draft concern because he's going all the way down in the 28th round as, you know, starting pitcher 95 right now. So this isn't really a draft concern. But if you're thinking about Finnegan as maybe a sneaky guy, like, you know, sometimes you look at the rotation, like I said, he's number two in the rotation. I'll take that guy. He's going to log innings Why, you know, with the upside. Yeah, but there's also kind of a reason why he's fallen that low. Yeah, I mean, you're totally right about that. Uh, and the Reds are funny because they sort of have a whole stockpile of guys with good stuff and question marks, um, yeah. you know, sort of across the board. And, and obviously they got three lefties on the Johnny Cueto trade, Finnegan me in one of them. Uh, Cody Reed being another one, and then John Lamb, who I think is more or less, you know, career is almost over because of the several back surgeries if he didn't already retire. Um, but the thing with Finnegan is he's got nasty swing and miss stuff. He's got the changeup, which is a double plus pitch. I think he needs to throw that more. Uh, he, as you said, he gets killed in the fastball, but he gets killed in the fastball in particular because he works away from hitters. He doesn't throw on the inside at all. He, you know, so he sort of never tries to jam guys up. You know whatsoever. It's almost like he's afraid to throw it in the inside because he's got some control issues and he's worried he's going to hang it in the middle of the plate. Well, he's almost doing that now because 22 of the 29 home runs that he gave up, he actually gave up on fastballs to the outside of the plate to right-handed hitters. I mean, so there's a very specific area that is killing him. So it's something that I think, you know, once again, in terms of pitch ability, just sort of working on changing his approach as a pitcher that's stuff that people can change it's stuff that you can get coached up he's got the ability there i mean he's got good pitches he's got good stuff um but you know bad home ballpark he's a bit of a a, a whip concern i mean his era was under four last year but a lot of that was was really just luck aided um but you know i think he's a guy that could potentially turn a corner he's in the national league he's on a team where i think he's going to get an opportunity and he's the kind of player that if he makes slight tweaks, his stuff is nasty that he could really take off. So I think, you know, he's not somebody I'm going after in a 12-team Roto League. Uh, probably not a 12-team league of any, you know, setup whatsoever, except for maybe the, the deepest head-to-heads where, you know, you have quality starts and stuff like that. You just really need to stack up your lineup with pitching. He's really a guy I'm going after in like a 16-team league plus. I mean, a lot of 18 and 30-team leagues. He's a guy I'd go after there because I think you could buy a low potentially and, mm-hmm. and get a decent return. Right. You mentioned um, – you, I'm, no, I'm drawing a blank. You mentioned Lamb, uh, Finnegan. You also got Lorenzen. You also got Rysel Iglesias who – Cody Reed. Knows, oh, who knows what's going to happen with him. Cody Reed. You got Robert Stevenson who, again, we've been waiting for him to you know blossom. You got Amir Garrett who people are starting to talk to. You got a lot of options. You still got Homer Bailey and Dick Stefani there. I just named nine or ten guys uh, for five spots, and all of them could be starters. All of them could be relievers. That's, you know, kind of the mix they're in. And the Reds have shown with some of their pitchers, they're not afraid to take a guy who others scream should be starting and throw him in the bullpen. So there mm-hmm. could be a reversal. You know, even though Finnegan logged 172 innings last year, I personally wouldn't be at all surprised if you saw him get moved to the to the bullpen for stitches, you know, you know stretches rather, uh, and a guy like Michael Lorenzen slot in for a few starts. Uh, I, I just don't think he's cemented into the rotation, despite 
where he currently sits and what he did last year.